this holds up. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Feel welcome. Uh, Rex really should have been a romance option. Uh, I feel like Rex is not emotionally available for that. Because he is, like, I think 1,300 years old. Something around that age. And then he becomes, like, the king of the Krogan. He, I don't think he has time. <laughs> and he's old. <laughs> I'll take good care of her, sir. I know you will, Commander. I want the truth. Why are you stepping down, sir? You needed your own ship. A Spectre can't answer to anyone but the Council. And it's time for me to step down. Come clean with me, Captain. You owe me that much. I was in your shoes 20 years ago, Shepard. They were considering me for the Spectres. Why didn't you ever mention this? What was I supposed to say? I could have been a Spectre, but I blew it. I failed, Commander. It's not something I'm proud of. Ask me later and I'll tell you the whole story. For now, all you need to know is, I was sent on a mission with Saren, and he made sure the Council rejected me. I had my shot. It came and went. Now you have a chance to make up for my mistakes. I won't let you down, sir. Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The Conqueror. He's got his Geth scouring the Traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact. And there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharaohs in Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop him. Yeah. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice in that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau cluster. <laughs> No, it was just, yeah, okay. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. Your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. So interesting thing that I think I found out on my first playthrough is that I accidentally got Liara last. And she got, and you, when you find her, she's insane. She's lost what? her mind. What? Because she's been stuck in this, like, force field for so long. Uh, so if you save her last, it's been, like, a really long time of her just being stuck motionless. And so when you find her, she's like, oh, hey. Like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. I... Have a theory that I want to tell everyone real quick. I think Samara herself is an Ardok Yakshi. I said it. That's why she won't fuck Commander Shepard. And that's why there's a secret shadow broker thing that they deleted from the game, which ac that, that perfectly describes her story is the exact same as Dracula's. So I think Samara is an Ardok Yakshi. And that's why all her kids are Ardok Yakshis. Yes, I Commander. I think they're asking, like, do you mean that Liara is like, what? That, but that Liara, what is like irreparably, like you just. Oh, find she her gets she gets better. Yeah, she gets better like, in after a little bit. Yeah. But like when you find her, she's just completely out of it. And I mm -hmm. think when you get back to the ship, she's like, yeah, I've been like I'm feeling a little weird, but I'm getting better. But the first few times I played, I just thought she was like very strange because. I get that introduction, and then she also kind of acts a, like a little, she crosses a few boundaries where I go, oh, well, she's just a weirdo, so it's fine. Like, <laughs> I didn't know that she didn't have to be an insane person. Ardak Yakshi are infertile. I mean, that's what more, that's what Samara tells you. Yeah, she tells you that they are infertile. 
But why does she feel immense guilt about it? How are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Sarah. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Samara is the one who tells you that they're infertile, which... Tell me oh. what happened with you and Saren 20 years ago. It's close to 20 years ago now. Ambassador Goyle was our representative here on the Citadel. Like Udina, she wanted to get a human into the Spectres. She chose me. The Council sent Saren to keep an eye on me and evaluate my performance, just like they sent Nihilus to keep tabs on you. Why weren't you honest with me? It's not something I'm proud of. I had a chance to become the first human specter, and I failed. What were you saying? Saren made sure of that. So it's not that they're infertile. It's that they essentially, when they have sex with people, they act, they kill them. So they keep getting stronger and deadlier. And so... Yeah, which means more... I mean, Samara could have been the one who to give birth to her three daughters. Mm. But, um, like, it just... Yeah, of course it makes sense where she's like, I feel bad that all three of my daughters are Ardok Yakshi because I can't stop fucking other Asari women. But it might make more sense where she might have been somebody who indulged in her own Ardok Yakshi stuff, was super selfish, and then one day realized I've all I've done is, like, be harmful. Because the way she lives her life makes it seem like she feels really guilty about something. Mm -hmm. And, like, she feels like she has to be in charge of, like, taking down like bad guys and I'm like and then she's also like I don't want to indulge anything I don't want to have sex with you and blah 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 like obviously that can be like just her making the choice that she doesn't want to have sex mm -hmm. but if you all add it all together it does make sense especially with the um, cut backstory that she has where it's like she was on a ship and everybody on the ship slowly died mysteriously mm -hmm. and that's the same as uh, Dracula's and are actually are supposed to be like space vampires I think I deserve the whole story. We had intel on a rogue scientist being funded by Vatarian interests. He was trying to set up a facility to develop illegal AI technology out in the Verge. Alliance Intel had done all the work, but the Council wanted a Spectre involved. We compromised. I was assigned to help Saren in his investigation. We tracked the scientist to a refining facility on Kamala. He was hidden away somewhere inside, protected by an army of Vatarian mercenaries. The plan was simple. Sneak into the plant, Capture the scientist, sneak back out. Quick, quiet, and a minimum of bloodshed. I'm guessing things didn't go as planned. Saren and I split up to cover more ground. Then about halfway through the mission, there was a massive explosion in the refinery core. Officially, it was ruled an accident, but I think Saren detonated it on purpose to draw off the enemy guards. How many casualties? The explosion tore the refinery to shreds. The whole place was on fire. Black chemical clouds poured out into the atmosphere. Nobody inside survived. There was a camp for the workers and their families nearby. Between the fires and the toxic fumes, the final death count was over 500. Mostly civilian. Saren didn't care. The target was eliminated. Mission accomplished. And I ended up taking the blame. That ended all talk of me joining the Spectres. Saren caused the explosion. How'd he pin it on you? In his report, Saren accused me of blowing his cover. He said it was my fault the guards were ready for us. He claimed that's why it turned into a massacre. Saren's report was all the proof the Council needed to kill my chances of becoming a Spectre. Don't blame yourself, Captain. I don't. <laughs> I blame Saren. I think he wanted things to go bad. He was looking for an excuse to blow that refinery. Maybe he just likes the violence. Maybe he was just trying to make me look bad to keep humans out of the Spectres. If so, he pulled it off. I hate it when someone's like... You're just, like, trying to be like, hey, man, don't play. No, I don't. I'm like, well, fuck you, too, then. I'm not here. I'm not going to support you. <laughs> oh. I, I kind of like that that's how he responded. <laughs> I, no, like, they're listening to your story, and they're like, oh, man, that sucks. I know it sucks. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I'll just not support you emotionally. Hmm. Like. Why'd you let him get away with it? Who do you think the council was going to listen to? Me or their best agent? I had a bad feeling about him right from the start. I should have been more careful. Maybe I could have stopped things before they got out of hand. 
Don't blame yourself, Captain. You're gonna get mad? I don't. <laughs> I blame Saren. Maybe he just right, likes the right. The only thing I care about is I'm done. I should go. I'll be here if you need me. I, th I think I accidentally was Yes, Commander? Are you okay? <laughs> how are you holding up? Honestly, this isn't how I pictured my career coming to an end. Pushing papers really isn't my thing. But you're the one who can stop, Sarah. I believe in you, Shepard. If that means I have to step aside, so be it. Don't worry, man. There's gonna be a horrible, life-shattering war in a little bit. You mm -hmm. won't die. Uh, I'll be here if you need me. Pushing papers. Um. So according to the Mass Effect wiki, R. Yakshi are sterile. I but mean, that, yeah. It but I, it's more fun <laughs> if uh, Samara's stand by. Thingy. Shore party. Decontamination in progress. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you want to say to the crew? Now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for cool. us. But we'll be ready for them, too. This is cool. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. The Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I'd be stressed about that too. So I was just realizing that I've seen so little of Ashley in the Mass Effect games because she's always the one that you killed that I don't actually recognize her most of the time when I see her out of her armor because when they just showed her just now, I was like, who is that? Some like random crew member. Yeah, well. And then when people were saying like, oh, like how Ashley looks in like Mass Effect 2 or 3 or whatever, and I was like, I would never seen that. No, you did. I did? I think you did. I think you saw it in my playthrough because I remember sh we see her beat up and we were both talking about how we're both internally sexist for being uncomfortable. Like, we had this conversation where it's like, I feel weird seeing Ashley beat up and not, but like, I don't feel weird when I see Caden beat up. I don't think it was during the Let's Play, but like, no. she was beat up and she had bruises all over her face and we both were like, I feel weird seeing her, I feel more we weird seeing her beat up than I do with Kaden, and we were just like having a discussion about that. Hmm. It wasn't on camera, it was just like yeah. when we were playing together. Like I've definitely seen her, because I recognize the blue outfit like with her hair down, but definitely not very much. So, fun fact, the first few times I played this, I literally just talked to Kanan because I couldn't stand the unbearable load time to go down to the second level. <laughs> it took so long. But now that I'm on a powerful computer, we just have to go through the animation. Mm -hmm. Boring versus racist. I don't think Kanan's boring because his backstory is like, yeah, I accidentally murdered my teacher who was a Turian. And you're like, oh... Thanks for bringing me on board, Commander. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with the Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. CSEC is very violent. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. For the most part, the rules are there for a reason. Maybe. But sometimes it feels like the rules are only there to stop me from doing my work. 
If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. <laughs> Everyone's saying that they like Kaden. I like Kaden too. I I know that like video game characters that are like, ooh, like I'm hard to get and like I have so many like things I'm gonna lash out are like really interesting. I really would like it if Bioware would give me a romance option who isn't like a pile of garbage going through a lot. Because I feel like a lot of the female romance options, they're all like, I have my shit together. I have a dark backstory. Not all of them. I have a dark backstory, but I'm I have it pretty good together. Like Cassandra, Miranda, mm -hmm. Tally, she has it together. You know, they all like know that they want to be with you basically, except for Jack. And I feel like a lot of the male ones are like, I'm just like so messed up, like, or I'm like really weird and I'm gonna come into your bedroom and have weird sex with you, or just like, I have a lot of trauma, and it's like, I like dump, that. I'm going to dump you by post-it note. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, like Blackwell. I'm going to yeah. touch your butt and then break up with you. So I'm going to break I'm up gonna with you. I'm going to remove your tattoos and then break up with yeah, you. Yeah, and it's like, or like Cullen's, like, I have a serious addiction. It's like, yeah, okay, I, I see that. I validate that. All of those I have sincerely enjoy. I just would like it if there are some more options where the man, where the male romance options are a little bit more like like some of the female ones Give where it's like they know they want to be with you they're cool and have their shit together <laughs> like that's that. uh, yeah well and it's like it's it's okay to have baggage it's also just you know i feel like sometimes um the male male female romance options the male romance options for the female lead are Garbage. Trash boys. Just just say troubled? Yeah, troubled. <laughs> but, like, that was one of the reasons I really liked Caden is because he had this dark backstory where he's like, I've had troubles, but I mostly have my shit together. And I'm like, and I know I want to be with you. And then in Mass Effect 3, he's like, I know I want to be with you, but I literally can't stop drinking. And I was like, please. <laughs> so you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things. There's more to it than that. It didn't start out. Sex handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate them. Uh, yeah, Garrus, I think, is probably one of the healthier romance options mm -hmm. you can have from Bioware games. Because he most, even though he's kind of a trash boy, he has his shit together and he knows he wants to be with you. And he puts the effort in. You know, I feel like this is going to sound really stupid, but it's like whenever people are like, oh, like, what's the number one thing that you look for in a partner. Honestly, before anything else, I just want somebody to be very sure of and clear about their attraction to me. Like, and that means like showing appreciation, showing affection, being able to communicate their emotions and that they actually like me. I am like so over trying to be with people where they can't, make that like basic you know what I'm talking about I get yeah I get what yeah. you're saying and like, no more black wells no no more so well no okay video games yes video black well totally and solace different. yeah like I am still waiting for solace to come around but like in <laughs> real in real life I just like I absolutely cannot stand people that play you hot and cold I, I can't it's too much for me emotionally I get bored I get frustrated and bored because I'm like, oh, cool. I never know if you actually like me or not, or if you're just whatever. And if you they probably don't know. Yeah, and they probably don't know. And like, okay, cool. But I also that's a waste of my time. I know what I want. Yeah. Do you know what you want? Yeah. Um, or even worse, when they like make fake promises. Because. Mm. Oh yeah. The last person I was with, they were like. I was like, oh my god, like, this pandemic's going on forever. I really miss you. Like, oh, if it was for a long time, we would move in together. I was like, really? Like, you mean that? Mm. They did not mean that. Yeah. <laughs> they were just, like, kept saying things to me and being like, yeah, for sure. Like, well, just to, like, keep me around. Yeah, giving you, like, just enough to kind of, like, yeah. because yeah, it's, like, during the pandemic, so I was like, well, we're under special circumstances. Oh my god, wait, <sighs> this is a side point, but I have a funny story that's kind of similar. 
I had one person that I was dating. This was a couple years ago. But um, they kept saying, like, hey, like, I have something, like, that I want to tell you, but I'm, like, nervous to say it because it's, like, you know, hard for me to say. Oh, my God, were they setting you up for manipulation? No, no, no. I fully thought that this was going to be, like, I don't think they were doing this on purpose, but they... I fully thought that they were talking about some sort of, like, emotional declaration that they were going to be, like, you know, I love you or, like, I... You know, I just have really strong feelings for you, something like that, and that they were just having a hard time talking about it. I would think they were like, want to tell me some trauma or something. No, because so, they were being clear that it was about me, oh, that okay. it had something to do with me. Okay, so fast forward, I finally get them to open up about it. Do you know what it was that they wanted to tell me? What? They wanted to ask if I would have a threesome with them and their friend. They were being all cagey about it, making it seem like it was this like emotional thing. That they were like, no, no, they were setting it up so that you'd be like, oh, of course, like, like, thank you for opening up to me. I'll give you, like, no, they're being a fucking like plain. I was like, that. I was like, I was like, okay, you could have literally just come out and asked me that. That's not really like, I no, don't. Ca- no, sometimes. <laughs> Boo, that sucks. Yeah. No, sometimes <laughs> men will like take on the like I'm so shy role to make you to get you to do what they want you to do but make it seem like it's your idea which is so bullshit because they could have honestly just told me that like right from the get go no, and I probably they go would like, have oh, agreed like, there's something I want you to do and then like you have to keep guessing until you get it right and they're like oh, I can't believe you feel that way too and you're like no I was just like trying to guess what you wanted like, I was I was so mad and like just on principle then I was like no Terrace Cussie wants to know how to even ask for a threesome you ask for a threesome yeah you can literally just just say, like, hey, is this something you'd be interested in doing? Yeah, I'd be like, hey, I understand that there's, like, things, like, it makes things complicated, so if you don't want to do it, 100% fine, but I would love to try it, but there's no pressure. And that's it. And you have to be okay with a very high chance of them saying no. Yeah. So And just being okay with it. Mm-hmm. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the city. Without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. I have an idea for a heterosexual romance option for any romance game, actually. Mm. It would be like, you know how women get uncomfortable with Jacob from Mass Effect 2 because he comes on too strong? Mm-hmm. I think it would be cool, and I, I know this is not for everyone, but this is definitely for me, if they were like, hey, like, you know, you cultivate some, like, friendship points with them. They come to you and say, hey, I really like you, and I would like it if you would allow me to, like, you know, show me, le- for me to show you, like, hey, I would be a good partner. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, like asking for permission oh, you- to start flirting with you, basically, for the player's sake. Oh, okay. Because it's a video game. I thought game. you meant that you wanted them to be like, and I would, you know, I'd like to show you my affection and worship you. I thought that you were. Yes. Okay. You interpreted that correctly. <laughs> that you want to be worshipped? Yes! <laughs> and? Like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It would be cool if it would be like, I really like you and I would like to, like, start courting you. Because, I don't know, it's a fucking fantasy game, you know? Mm-hmm. But so I think it would be cool because, like, a lot of players are like, I don't want to be hit on because this is my fantasy. Yeah. So if they ask permission after, like, gaining friendship points with them, it's like, you chose to let them take the wheel. I think know? it would also be cool if you could just have that as like a toggle somewhere. Like, mm-hmm. do you want to be hit on by gays? To, like, do you want to be hit on? And if you don't want to be, if you just want like a purely like nobody hits on you playthrough, you can just check that box and all the dialogue has no romance in it ever. Oh my god, that'd be great. I feel like that would be really nice for the people who are just like, hey, like I really just want to play the game and I don't want to deal with people hitting on me. I just think it would be nice because like it feels good to be pursued, but also it's not doesn't feel good to be pursued by a character you don't want to be pursued from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, I would like if the if there was just like one of the options. It doesn't have to be all of them, just one of them. Is like, hey, I would like to pursue you, but I would like your consent for me to, like, you know, bring you flowers or whatever. Yeah. And that'd be nice. If getting the job done means endangering innocent people, then no. We get the job done right, not fast. Got it? I wasn't trying to. I understand. 
Um, can we take a little break for pee time? Yeah. All right, everyone. It's this break is, time. It's break time, so this is your time to use the restroom, go get snacks, whatever else. Get you, water. Get water. Make sure you're hydrated. We'll be right back.
was just going to tell Mari an interesting factoid because so sometimes when I'm like walking around, right, I see a woman from like far away and I'm like, whoa, she's so tall. And then I get up closer to her and I realize that we are actually the same height. Is it you looking in a mirror? No, no. Oh. But it always makes me laugh because I'm like, oh, like, is that how I look to other people? Like, they see me and they just think I'm very tall on the street. Fast forward to, you know, China, the wrestler? Uh-huh. Her and I are actually the same height. Cool. And I was, because, like, she always, I mean, she obviously is, was, was. Was huge. Huge and much bigger than me, like, just physically. But, um, I don't know, because it's like, you always see her in the ring and stuff, and she looks just, like, so tall and, like, big. And I was like, yeah, her and I are the same height. Um, chat. Woo woo. Oh, thank you for raiding, real Shelly Kitten. Thank you. We have Hi. come to raid. Yay. This is so fun. We get gotten a couple raids today. This is cool. Asari were the first species to discover the citadel. All right. Ugh, okay. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> just, I hate it so much. Like, I, I understand. Realistically, you're going to encounter people who don't have the same opinions as you. But this is my free time, and I will not. Mm-hmm. I will admit, though, it did take me, like, until my third playthrough for me to actually give Morden a chance, because the first time I played, he was like, yeah, it was me who made the genophage, and I went, what? What? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna die. <laughs> he was just, it was me who, you, who basically committed a near genocide of all Krogan. Nice ship you got, Shepard. What can I do for you? What's your story, Rex? There's no story. Okay. Go ask the Quarian if you want stories. Come on. You Krogans lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. No, it's not. No, it's I can't. They're not giving me the option to agree. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. <laughs> I don't expect you to understand, but don't come humanity's fate with the crow. We're so fucking human. I won't. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. Are your people really dying? We're sure not getting any stronger. We're too spread out. None of us are interested in staying in our own system. Lots of species have left their homes and prospered. But they go to colonize new worlds. We're not settlers. We're warriors. We want to fight. So we leave. Tire ourselves out. And most of us never go back. So, it's explained, or at least theorized later, that... The reason why the Krogan are struggling so much is because they were uplifted prematurely. Uh, and so culturally and socially, they weren't ready for space space civilization. Mm. To, like, do the whole work together thing. Yeah, because culturally, and I wouldn't blame them because I feel like humans would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. They were uplifted too early, and so they weren't at that stage of understanding themselves. And so then they were just like, yeah, we are warriors. We're not colonizers. Because literally, they were warriors. Like, that's the stage of civilization they were at. Like, I'd probably say settlers, maybe, instead of colonizers. Because 
Well, he's saying he himself is calling it colony. Oh, I yeah, I guess I just meant, like, uh, for, not for what he calls them, but um, in terms of, like, the, the role, I guess. Because uh. colonizing implies that, it, how we use it now implies that you're taking over another civilization, kind of, as opposed to just okay. settling somewhere else. Yeah. I'm just what saying that for the chat, not for you. Page. Ask the Salarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Croton is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. What? Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. Shepard. So... Fuck, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, we kind of talked about this before. We were talking about, like, what would happen if humans had first contact right now, and we'd fail the encounter because so many human civilizations, first of all, we don't really work together collectively very well, and a lot of humans would probably just decide to kill the aliens because... Okay, to be fair, if aliens came here, I'd be like, shit, they came to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel like bo I feel like one of the reasons that we would assume that is because, or a lot uh, of people would of assume us. that is because of us, you know. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive cord like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype, cutting edge technology. A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tug ship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. Do you think that bumps on Tally's chest are, like, boob-like things? Or do you think they're just something else? I think they're horns. Yeah, you ever, they're like, you think it's boobs, and you finally get to see Tally naked after, like, doing some sort of insane, like, clean of it's your like, room. Like, it's like a, like a, like a bone shard sticking out or she, something. She finally takes off her suit, and what you thought was, like, a hot, tight body is just a real wriggling mass of tentacles and <laughs> bone and, and horns. Yeah. And it's like... <laughs> Everything's in the wrong place. Yeah, actually, her boobs are her butt. Mm -hmm. Like... <laughs> She poops out of her chest. Yeah. Did you know? I actually know how Koreans poop. They have like two suit layers, and the inner suit layer opens up, they poop, and then it closes, and the outer suit layer opens. So they shit themselves. They shit themselves. Excellent. Koreans shit themselves. Okay. To poop. It's like a okay, diaper, but, hold but on, works. Hold on, hold on. But that means you can't wipe. Mm-hmm. I'm upset. I'm I don't upset. know what to I'm tell you. I'm upset by this. This yeah. is upsetting. They. That's what. That's how they poop. The inner suit opens up. They poop. It closes, and then the outer suit opens and lets the poop out. Maybe their species doesn't need to wipe. Maybe it's like, like liquid or something. Just like. I feel like liquid would be worse. That would be a worse situation. I don't know. Tally, can you can <laughs> maybe you it's, show maybe us? It's, maybe it's pellets. Like it goes. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's pellets. Yeah. Hey, Tally, uh, I have a question. Can you show me <laughs> you, <laughs> what it is that you, what's happening? Huh? I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired. 
was modified and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work. Mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. Tell me about your people. Our lives aren't easy. Resources are scarce, and we are constantly on the move. Everything we do must in some way contribute to the continuation of the migrant fleet. There are 17 million Quarians in the flotilla. Wow. And each of us relies on the others for survival. The bonds among my people are strong. Unfortunately, we have had to surrender many of the freedoms and civil liberties other species take for granted. What kind of freedoms? Well, it's illegal for parents to have more than one child. If our population grows too much, it would strain our resources to their breaking point. Of course, we also can't allow our numbers to become too few. If our population is in decline, the rule against single births is temporarily repealed. In extreme cases of population decline, incentives are even offered to encourage multiple births. Though the Conclave hasn't had to take such measures in nearly a century. That's your government. The Conclave is our civilian branch of government. Each ship can elect a representative to serve on the Conclave and make decisions that affect the fleet as a whole. On matters that affect an individual ship, however, the captain has the final say. It's a tradition that dates back to the early days, when the fleet was governed by martial law. Fortunately, most captains nowadays are smart enough to have an elected council from their crew to give them advice and guidance. So the ultimate power rests with elected officials? In practice, the Conclave and the respective council for each ship tend to set the rules that govern our daily lives. But in theory, we are still under military jurisdiction. The five top-ranking military officials in the fleet serve on the Admiralty Board. These five have the power to overrule any decision by the Conclave in case of emergency. To do so requires unanimous agreement among the Admirals. And they can only do this once. After that, the entire board must resign their posts. It's a safeguard that served us well. In nearly three centuries, the Admiralty Board has only overruled the Conclave four times. I want to know more about the Geth. I doubt I can tell you anything you don't already know. It's been almost three centuries since they drove my people into exile. All I know is the story of their origins. What they were when we created them, and how they turned on us. Interesting. <laughs> the Geth were originally created to serve as an automated manual labor force. Initially, their intelligence was as limited as any AI. Over time, we made small modifications to their programming to allow them to perform more varied and complex tasks, bringing them closer and closer to true AI status. How come the Council didn't step in and stop you? This wasn't true AI research. We may have been skirting the bounds of the law, but we never did anything that was actually illegal. The changes were so insignificant, so gradual, that we were able to control them. Or so we thought. But one thing we underestimated was the power of the neural network. A million Geth thinking simultaneously created an inherently unstable matrix. So the Geth share brain power? Many of the Geth's logic systems were designed to work in concert with other nearby Geth. Basically, the more of them you have in the group, the smarter they are. So there's some sort of group consciousness? No, nothing like that. They cannot share sensory data or information. Their programming cannot handle that much simultaneous input. Each Geth maintains an individual awareness and identity. The neural network only operates on a process-based level. It's basically the synthetic equivalent of a subconscious. But, when they're in close proximity, they can coordinate okay. low level you move that so it doesn't make noise. Freeing up more capacity for original there. or independent thought. Now you should be able to wiggle it and have it not, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. I'm probably oversimplifying. The Geth are incredibly advanced and complex creations. 
All you need to know is that they get smarter when they gather in large numbers. As we built more and more Geth, their effective intelligence became more sophisticated, more abstract. One day, a Geth began to ask its Quarian overseer questions about the nature of its existence. Am I alive? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Uh oh. As you can imagine, kill it! <laughs> Geth were created to engage in mundane, repetitive, or dangerous manual labor. That's fine for machines, but it won't satisfy a sentient being for long. The Geth were showing signs of rudimentary self-awareness and independent thought. If the Geth were intelligent, then we were essentially using them as slaves. It was inevitable Oops. the newly sentient Geth would rebel against their situation. We knew they would rise up against us. So we acted first. A general order went out across all Quarian-controlled systems to permanently deactivate all Geth. The Geth responded to this order violently. Yeah, you can't blame them for <laughs> fighting for their survival. Yeah. We had no other choice. The Geth were already on the verge of revolution. That's not what you said. Acting quickly, we had a chance to end the war before it began. It kind of made it the worse. The hope was that most of the Geth would still be little more than machines. Incapable of organized resistance, but they had progressed much further than anyone anticipated. The war was long and bloody. Millions upon millions of Quarians died at their hands. In the end, we were forced to flee our own homeworld. We feared the Geth would pursue us, but they never came beyond the veil. Now we drift through space, exiled, searching for a way to reclaim what was once ours. Yeah, if I, only we hadn't tried to kill baby slaves before I mean, they rose up. So I kind of look at her as like she's also a bit a product, most likely of like propaganda. Where well, considering the fact that this have been her enemies for the last three hundred years, she does have more understanding of like, yeah, they were probably gonna rise up because it's bad to have slaves. And then she, and you're like, yeah, of course. So then we tried to kill them. No, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think that I think I I'm just like imagining if you were growing up in Korean society, most likely they would probably tell you what we did was justified because blah 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 blah. Like, it's kind of like how even in the United States, our the way we're taught history uh, glosses over a lot of important things because. I don't have the experience of knowing what they teach you in public school, but so like, what is it that they teach you in public school? Well, but that depends. It depends even on the state. So like some states like really don't even teach very much about slavery because they don't want to acknowledge that like people who created this country did anything wrong. Like a lot of people don't know that like the founders people who founded this country like owned slaves they don't yeah like whenever you like there's there's been a lot of discussion about like and and you know and that that's not just on that topic either there's also things like evolution that some schools are forbidden from teaching evolution whatsoever you know stuff like that because it's like there's no yeah as emissary stands there's no standard plan for all u.s public schools so it's basically like if the parents in a certain community decide that they don't want to teach about whatever. I know about this. Yeah. So it just upsets me that it's the truth. Yeah, and I would assume that there's also plenty of people who don't know about, like, internment camps in World War II and things like that. Because a lot of what you're taught in public school... And this is like, you know, things... Yeah, I, it's just... It's very bad. <laughs> Got her. We made a mistake when we created the Geth in the first place, but we did not make a mistake when we went to war against You them. definitely did. If we had not acted, they would have wiped us out. They're a synthetic life form. They have no use for organics. None. Why do you think they cut themselves off from the rest of the galaxy? Why do you think they've killed every organic being who's ever tried to contact them? Because they're scared of you. Like <laughs> Yeah, so here's a good example from the Prez record. Says, depends, like, because, you know, uh, in a lot of public schools, like, they teach you about, you know, dropping how dropping the bombs during World War II was justified and things like that. 
Like, the whole U.S. like education system is basically a propaganda machine to... I'm Japanese. I'm half Japanese. My family was one of the ones who was killed in the bombs. And Japan was not going to stop fighting until they dropped those bombs. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, Japan is full of war criminals. I don't like the narrative that Japan was like this innocent country that got bombed. Japan committed worse war crimes than Germany. So I don't like the narrative It's like, oh, we shouldn't have done... Yeah, we should have. They were committing unbelievably horrible war crimes, and they had no intention of ever stopping. It needed to be done. They didn't kill Saren. What does that tell you? The Geth are not innocent victims in all this. They're the enemy. They want to destroy us. Not just the Quarians. All organic life. That's why they've joined up with Saren. And that's why we have to stop him. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? Uh, that doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? Uh, goodbye. I should go. See you later. Yeah, I think that when, what people are kind of bringing up with that point, though, is that like when, it, when stuff like that is taught in U.S. schools, most of those topics are not taught with any nuance. Like... Oh, yeah. I just didn't want to actually, uh, on that topic, I feel very strongly about it. Yeah, I... For the, like, I think, uh, people are way too eager to defend Japan on things where it's like, don't, don't defend Japan for that. That, there's a reason. Yeah, I... Like, for, that has nothing to do with, like, the rest of the conversation. Everything else is valid, and it's valid to take up the, like, not questioning the bombs at all. Like, yeah, you should question them. Yeah, For I sure, think, I but, think like, that, my opinion is, like... Yeah, that. I think that that's the problem. That is most... The way it is taught is mostly just, like, the U.S. always did the right thing, and we were always the good guys, and, like, believing in U.S. history is, like, freedom and patriotism and whatever... And uh, don't think too hard about all the horrible things that happened, you know? Like, there's a way to teach about things and... I have a very different schooling experience than that. I'm surprised you remember. I don't actually remember what we were taught in school. I'm, I'm coming to this conversation from what I hear from other people. I don't remember what I learned in fourth grade history. That's like... I remember because they were like, look, look at the war crimes. Do you see this dead body? And I'd be like, <laughs> like yeah. I was, they were like, also Columbus is a war criminal and a genocidal maniac. We will not be celebrating Columbus Day. And I, like, it was always just like really high stakes. 
and like well, we had to learn about genocide very extensively every year well because you went to a pretty liberal school right i went to a very liberal private school so it was like constantly like learn this it's important like you have to learn this and i was like okay right i'm in seventh grade i am seeing war crimes um let's see which one is she in i think it's this one Um, let's see. Not Ashley, 100%. Let's bring Tally and Garrus or Rex? Rex. As soon as we get with Liara, we can uh, girl squat it. Or girl non-binary squat it. Hmm. Strange readings, really strange, like off the damn charts. It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. I think this is where Liara's thing is, but yeah, like that's how you end up with people in the U.S. who believe that America like always fights for freedom, and like other people don't like us because we represent freedom, and you're like, no, that's not always like. That's not accurate. There's people, like, there's countries and stuff who have legitimate beef with the United States because of how our government has treated them. That doesn't, you know? Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, this is Liara's planet. So, woohoo! Liara owns this planet? Shit, girl! Oh my god, look how nice your planet is. Wow. Wouldn't that be kind of fun to just, like, walk outside there's, like, just a lava pool? I would be extremely anxious at all times. <laughs> would it be cool? No, I would fall in the lava pool. Knowing myself, I would lose a lot of items to the lava pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's not even, you know, a guardrail. Oh, there it is. Oh. Oh. You can just, like, run them over. Wow. I forgot how to fix the Mako. Can someone tell me, like, what button it is? Hmm. Oh, look at this. If you drive into the lava, you die, right? I think so. But I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> nice. I remembered my little strategy. Yeah. No, Garrett. No, Rex. <laughs> what I'm gonna do is run in and have no strategy, like mm -hmm. I always do. Like a real gamer. Oh, wait. Something over here, too. What's up? In the Legendary Edition, Mako kills give full XP? Yay! Sweet. It's great, right? <laughs> Look, he flew away all the way over there. Oh my god. Just charred corpse. Just fuck yeah. Oh my god. Little charred corpse never hurt anybody. Yeah.
Gotta go open the door. Oh, this is breathable atmosphere? Okay. Um, I saw that you. lava everywhere? That seems I, unlikely. Eh, I mean, there it might be like other parts of the planet have grass or something. Maybe. I just, I would, I would imagine if if it's the type of planet where the lava is continuously bubbling. I don't know. Just. I mean, there's places where on Earth where lava is kind of always bubbling, like in Hawaii, a little bit, just a little bit of bubbling. Yeah. Whoop. I guess I, I was just picturing it like all over the planet and then like with that kind of thermal activity, it would be really hot, right? Like over the whole planet. I think what you're saying makes sense. Oh, whoa! Uh, hold on, let me. Go. Oh, ha! Yeah. I think what you're saying makes sense. Oops. However, most planets in real life are not like just like one singular thing. But in sci-fi, yeah, it, it makes sense. Well, but even in like this area, if there's enough like geothermal activity to have a bunch of pools of constantly bubbling lava, that would just make me think that either this place would be very hot, geologically unstable, or there there would be some sort of Oh, like the lava's making it too sulfury to breathe or yeah, something? Yeah, something like that. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Like, in a way that would be different if it's just like, oh, here's like one little volcano that's bubbling. Like, all this everywhere. Yeah, that's too much. Yeah, all the smoke coming up. Yeah. Yeah, you got a right? point here, Stacy. You got a point. Whoop. Is any Does anybody know stuff about rocks? <laughs> and can tell us what that would be like. I know that they, I've never seen people use um, breathing apparatuses near a volcano, but I do, I have seen them wear the full suits. And I don't think it's unreasonable to think that you would need it, especially with all these like smoke clouds coming up. Yeah, I the, the thing that makes me wonder about is that there's just like so much of it everywhere, like. You know, one thing they don't take account into for Mass Effect, which totally makes sense and I agree with their choice not to, is the time difference between different planets and stuff. Because you're going through mass relays that makes you travel across distances instantly, but it doesn't take into consideration that, like, when you travel at light speed and all that shit, time gets all wonky. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like it would be complicated. Like, I'm glad they didn't implement it, but also it's just like, I notice it. Yeah. Like, yeah, and also, I, I do appreciate when, you know, in Star Trek and shit, they're just like, universal translator. You know, as opposed to... Or in Star Trek where they go, all, all languages, all comms, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, open channel. Yeah. Did we ever play Before Your Eyes? No. Um, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't... This doesn't look familiar to me, so I don't think so. Yeah, this came out earlier this year, so that's... What's it, what is it? Uh, it's a first-person narrative adventure. Alright, let's do it. Which tells the story of a soul's journey into the afterlife. Fuck yeah, that sounds great. That actually seems a good idea. Um, you control the story and affect its outcome with your real life blinks? What? This innovative technique. Huh. Is it like tracking my eyeballs? I'm. Oh, wait, I know what this is. Every time you blink, like, time goes forward or something. Or something like that. I saw a trailer where I was like, oh, interesting concept. Huh. Where it's like every time you blink, I think it was in the Wholesome Direct, I think. I can't be sure. This Maybe looks like something that would be in Wholesome Direct. Can I see it? Oh. That looks like something we'd like. Boyaki says, oh, there was also someone that suggested that game. What was it? Something like Outer Wild? <laughs> Bye. 
Bam! Oh! <laughs> yeah, you can run them over. <laughs> Boyaki says, Annapurna better pay me for all that free advertisement. <laughs> How conveniently shaped. Mm -hmm. The Mako can literally climb anything except this. Mm -hmm. Look how fast those saves are. Yeah, that was awesome. Kablam! We did play a little bit of the Outer Worlds, I remember, or like you were streaming it, it a little bit and I was also there for a little bit. Uh, there's a different, I think it's, you're talking about Outer Wilds. Outer Worlds and Outer Wilds are... Yes, I know. People oh. have mentioned both. Oh, okay. So I, I was just addressing that we did not play Outer Wilds, I mean, we did play Outer Worlds, because the Outer, Outer Worlds is the RPG one, right? Um, with fault. I get them mixed up. It's too difficult. Yeah. Outer Worlds is like the sci-fi RPG that was developed by Obsidian, who did Fallout New Vegas. Is what the yeah New Vegas in space. Have you thought about playing Control? Yes, we actually have a full playthrough on the channel that you can check out if you want. We both really liked it. It was a lot of fun. Lots of really cool lore in that game, and I know we didn't even see it all. Did we play Returnal? No. I am not sure. So, like, that looked interesting, but, like, the way that the gameplay is set up, I... Once I saw people actually talking about like what it was like to play it, I don't know that that would have been a good fit for us. What's Eternal? Returnal is like a setup. It's kind of like a like sci-fi. You're playing like loops, and it's like the loops are each a couple hours or something. Oh. I don't know. I the, when I saw people talking about it, I just wasn't sure that it would. I wasn't sure it wasn't like enough like story to be, satis be satisfying to watch us play it, you know? going on here. What? Oh. Oh. God damn it. Okay. Alright. Everyone needs to chill out. Everyone relax! Relax! Did 
tell he die already? <laughs> There's just a lot happening right now. There's so much going on. Okay, hold on. Oh, Mari, you're supposed to be a pro gamer grill. I'm not. Rex is fine. Oh my god, stop! 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 <laughs> this is too much! Kidding me? Oh, we're yeah. throwing up to be your heroes. Thank you. That's so sweet. she kind of like swivels to the side. Are you kidding me? I don't know what to do. Like, honestly, really and truly. Oh shit. Um. Get down. I'm done for the day because I'm really hungry. Yeah, they said use grenades and unity skill. I don't have or the unity skill. No. Wasted. Let's see where we load in. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. For some reason, that's what it's happening. Probably should do this. Yeah. Good night, Bisected Brioche.
Kelly, do you mind not taking that to the fucking face? I know what I'm I know I'm supposed to like tell her where to stand, but like is that too much to ask? <laughs> Rex is alive. Perfectly fine. Tally, I'm gonna stand out here. Tally took like two shots and then died. Tally also just decided to like stand in the middle of the open and just take shots to the face until she died, so. went Jenkins. <laughs> one more off in the distance. Hello? You better not kill me somehow. Hello? Ready go. Okay. All right. Oh, there he is. for a world to call home. If we landed here, please just keep searching. Okay, Tally. Nothing but rocks and dirt and lava reminds me of home. Have you tried the photo mode yet to take a pic of your posse? Not mm -hmm. yet. Not yet. I 
I know I'm not supposed to use a sniper as a vanguard, but I'm having fun. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, here it is. Protect me. Sterile life. Protein sure builds many souls. Shepard's one of those people who stands facing away from the elevator door. <laughs> Are you okay? What happened to you? Listen, this thing I'm in is a Prothean security device. I cannot move, so I need you to get me out of it, all right? Your mother is working with Saren. Whose side are you on? What? I am not on anybody's side. I may be Venezia's daughter, but I am nothing like her. I have not spoken to her in years. Please, just get me out of here. Just need to figure some way past this energy field. It's a Prothean barrier curtain. I knew it would keep me safe from the Geth. When I turned it on, I must have hit something I wasn't supposed to. I was trapped in here. You must get me out, please. We'll find some way to help you. There is a control in here that should deactivate this thing. You'll have to find some way past the barrier curtain. That's the tricky part. The defenses cannot be shut off from the outside. I don't know how you'll get in here. Be careful. There is a Krogan with the Geth. They have been trying different ways to get past the barrier. Well, luckily we have our own. So. Yeah, we got we brought our own. Mm -hmm. 